In the last decade or so, there's been this milk renaissance of alternatives to dairy that are exploding in popularity, from soy to almond, oat, hazelnut, coconut, rice milk, and many others. But which one should you actually be drinking if you wanna be environmentally conscious? Today, we're gonna to go through some of the most popular milk options and rate them from worst to best based on how green they are so that you can make an informed decision when you're buying. We've actually been wanting to start a series on this channel for a while now related to the environment and climate change and going green. The climate crisis is gonna be the biggest crisis of our time, so we wanna be thinking about it and talking about it as much as possible. <laughs> Up first is plain old dairy milk. You may have heard by now, but the general consensus is that dairy milk is pretty bad for the environment. In fact, an Oxford University study in 2018 found that dairy milk results in three times more greenhouse gas emissions than any alternative milk and nine times more land use. Mostly because so much feed is required for the cows and the land required to grow their feed. Dairy milk also uses the most water by a long shot. So this single glass, which is 200 milliliters of milk, would have taken 120 liters of water to make. This is even full. This is like halfway there. But it's safe to say that if you're looking for an environmentally friendly milk, dairy isn't gonna be it. Our first alternative is rice milk. Rice milk is usually much less expensive than other milk alternatives, but when it comes to emissions, it ranks very high. It's actually due to the bacteria that breed in the rice patties, and it's because they actually release methane. Although they're not technically farting, but I mean, if it helps you understand it, then yeah, the bacteria are farting. Its large amount of fertilizers end up polluting waterways and doing damage to the environment. While some of the other crops have this runoff issue as well, making rice milk contributes three times the amount of fertilizer runoff compared to the other milk alternatives we're gonna get to later. In terms of water usage, it's pretty thirsty. Uh, it requires 54 liters of water per glass of milk. Thirsty is synonymous now with horny. Rice milk is not as horny as dairy milk, but it's still very horny for an alternative. Perhaps the most popular alternative, popular, perhaps the most popular alternative is almond milk. I feel like a lot of people have experience with almond milk. It feels like it's pretty ubiquitous to any store you go to. On the bright side, it requires smaller farmland usage than most other alternative milks, and it has lower emissions. Its main downfall is that it uses a lot of water. So this is almost a liter carton, which means it would have taken around 370 liters of water to make. To be clear, dairy milk still uses more. On top of this, the vast majority of almond farming is done in California's Central Valley, where drought potential is high, which just puts an extra strain on the environment. Not to mention nearly 70% of commercial bees are used to pollinate almonds. And last year, a third of these bees died by the end of the season due to these pressures and environmental threats. Next up is coconut milk. In in and of itself, coconut milk has a fairly low impact on the land and low water use. You don't have to deforest the trees to make the milk, and the actual trees have a greenhouse gas benefit. Global demand of this milk is causing some people to clear cut rainforests in order to grow the trees for coconut milk. The vast majority of coconut milk comes from Indonesia, Philippines, tropical climates like India, and the demand of this milk does create exploitation of the worker. If you do love coconut milk, it's very important that you look for brands that are certified fair trade. I don't think I've ever really had coconut milk out of a coconut, but I know that's VVV on trend. We did it in uh, Costa Rica. So I've just been alerted by the authorities that I have drank milk out of a coconut. Um, this makes me a little bit disturbed about my own memory and my own ability to look back on my life. Soy milk is actually a really good alternative. In the Oxford study, across all measures, it ranked really well. Low land usage, low water usage, and low emissions. As an added bonus, it's one of the only alternative milks that comes with a similar protein content to dairy milk, if that matters to you. It's soy amazing. What? Why did I turn Australian? If you say soy, it sounds like you're saying so in Australian accent. Soy. Soy. Soy, you want to go to the garage sale, mate? <laughs> I'm so stupid. Now, in the past, there's been some concern and controversy around certain hormones like phytoestrogens in soy milk, which act similar to the human hormone estrogen and have those effects in your body. But after years of research, the general consensus is that you would have to be consuming mass quantities of soy milk and tofu to see any of these negative effects. One actual pitfall of soy milk is that in a lot of places, they grow them in massive quantities in order to feed livestock from meat and dairy. And as a result, forests or rainforests like the Amazon have been clear cut in order to make way for these farms. But doing a bit of research and reading the carton can help you find products that come from Canada or the USA and help support ethical practices. Now we have hazelnut milk. Ah. 
Hazelnut milk has become more popular in recent years, and this is for good reason. It's got a nutty taste, like almond milk, and without the environmental impact. Not only do hazelnut trees pull carbon from the atmosphere and decrease greenhouse gas emissions, but they're actually pollinated by the wind and not honeybees. They also grow in moist climates where drought is less of a concern and this creates less of an environmental strain. There are potential human rights concerns with some regions, for example, child labor being used for hazelnut milk in Turkey. So it's important that you try and figure out where your milk is coming from. Now, before we get to our crowned alternative milk winner, there's a few other honorable mentions that don't necessarily have as much research done on them. These include pea milk, which the producers say create only 25% the emissions of dairy. P-E-A milk. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> Not urine milk. Whoa. There's also macadamia milk, which is a good alternative to nut milks because it uses less water and are typically grown in less water scarce regions. And then there's hemp milks, which are considered good for the environment because they're usually made in small batches and therefore not contributing to these monoculture mass operations that a lot of the other milks are. It's like a microbrewery for milk. But as it stands, the current winner of the battle of the alternative milks is... A uh, drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, milk. milk. That's girl Bob. After looking at all the metrics, it's the general consensus that oat milk is an amazing alternative to dairy. It uses very little water, very little land, and has low emissions. Currently, between 50 to 90% of oat production is actually used for animal feed, but the idea is that we don't have to clear cut forests for it, and over time, we might be able to slowly transition or steal that production for milk as opposed to animal feed. Ultimately, there's potential to increase the production without actually causing a bigger impact right now. Oats are grown in colder climates like Canada, so they don't require the deforestation in developing countries. The main problem with oat milk is that it's a monocultural crop, which means it's more susceptible to disease in pets, and as a result requires the use of pesticides and other chemicals. At the end of the day, the differences between these plant milks are kind of marginal compared to dairy milk, so if you are wanting to decrease your environmental impact, just choose an alternative milk. But obviously, depending on your personal taste and dietary restrictions, you could try different ones or even rotate through different kinds, and that would be cool too. Mwah. Thanks again for watching our video video and our channel. Like we said, we really do want to make more videos related to environmentalism and the climate crisis. So if you have questions or want us to investigate something, let us know in the comments and we'll try and make a video about it. And make sure you're subscribed. As always, we're still saying that. In theory, we are still <laughs> YouTubers and we will see you next week for a new science video. See you later. Whether or not it's next week, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs>